Thank you for tuning in to Regina Young, the Thai Voice Resource Center. We are sitting here talking about the coronavirus and when do they think that it's going to reopen. So the um, governor from Connecticut believes that the businesses stuff should really stay shut down until pretty much June of 2020, even though he hopes to have it back open by May the 15th. But he says that all governors need to work together because if Connecticut does it, but Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey don't do it, people are just going to travel from one state to another. And Delaware, they did not shut down the liquor stores, but in like Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey, I believe they did. So we have a lot of people from Pennsylvania coming to Delaware for alcohol. Which means that that opens up the state of Delaware for more cases of coronavirus. We definitely know that in New York, there's a lot of cases of coronavirus. Actually, I think they're number one. So let's see when this man on PBS, um, the governor, thinks that they should reopen it. And this is from um, the episode from April the 14th, 2020. We think about how we open up again. And just quickly, Governor, you, you've also mentioned July 1 as a key date. And, and what, where did you come up with that? I came up with that because at that point, all of the federal programs uh, run, out of, uh, run out of juice. And that's what really makes me worry. We've got the two-month uh, you know, PPP, PPP. That's the one for paycheck protection. That's two months. We've got uh, folks who get their insurance or forgiven for two months. Uh, you know, at that point, even all of the state aid, the money we need to keep our, our government going, starts uh, getting a little tighter. So I think the government's going to have to make up its mind, the federal government, if we don't get things open up and people back to work by July 1st, there'll be another uh, supplemental funding necessary to keep our hospitals going, our small businesses going, and a lot of individuals with unemployment. That's a big Wow. Did you hear that? So that's what I've been trying to tell people the whole time about getting their stimulus check and why they need to save it. So he's saying that, yes, there's funding out here, but he believes by July, if they don't have it up and running by July, they're going to run out of funding, which might put the state, the country in a great depression, which will bring you back to back in the old days when there was so much things going on that people couldn't find or buy food, water, whatever it is. Now, if you live in a country like I do, you have well water, so you don't pay for water. But a lot of people live in the states, in the cities, like New York, Brooklyn, Philly, you know, the Bronx, Queens. They have to pay for water. Not only do they have to pay for water, they have to probably buy water to drink because the water might not be so good. I don't know because I've never drunk water out of water fountain at any of those states. But I'm just saying. So he's telling you. That people really need to be prepared because he's saying that in Connecticut, he believes they're going to run out a lot of stuff. He's saying that the money that they got funded was only for two months. So I hear a lot of people saying, well, I'm not going to pay my mortgage because I can't be evicted. They can't take my, uh, my house. They can't foreclose on me. If you're buying a house, and listen to me good, and I'm not trying to be smart, funny, disrespectful, or nothing. But if you're buying a house... Do you really think that they're going to say to everybody in America, I don't care how much your mortgage is, because of coronavirus, you do not have to pay for those two months. We're going to credit your account for those two months. You might get blessed with a grant that will do that, but not everybody is going to have that. It's going to take you back to when the uh, mortgage companies got into a little situation with Sally Mae and all of them and they had a program called HARP uh, making homes more affordable a lot of people had bought a house and they were paying a mortgage such as myself one month my mortgage was like 1700 or something dollars not one month a lot of months and I was like oh my goodness I was going through a divorce there was no way I was going to be able to keep my house but I wanted it and I actually had to apply for a hardship program to make arrangements to lower my interest and by lowering my interest that allowed me to lower my payments which made my house affordable for me to live in people are going to have to do the same thing this is why you need to learn to shop smart and to be honest what you eat and now is not a major thing like you're cheaper to uh cook at home because I was just doing the math yesterday about how if I took all four of my, me and my 
three kids out to eat that we would eat, let's just say McDonald's. A double quarter pound of meal for, at McDonald's is $9.49. Say I bought four of those. You're talking about almost $40 right there. How long is that food going to keep me full before I want something else to eat? Because the fast food, it's going to run through me quickly. And I'll be hungry probably in a couple hours. But $40 would have got me a pack of chicken, maybe a pack of hamburger, some tomatoes, peppers, onions, potatoes, to make a couple meals for a couple of days. Let's see what he says from BSC, episode April the 14th, 2020. This is the governor from Connecticut. Big day. And we know that Congress has just uh, announced that they're going to be away for several weeks, coming back, uh, I believe, in, in May. So we will see uh, about those deadlines. Governor Ned Lamont of Connecticut, we thank you very much, and we wish you the very best with everything you're dealing with. Thank you, Judy. And now let's hear from that leading voice in business about how and whether some economic activity should resume again and under what conditions. Suzanne Clark is the president of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. It's a group with some three million members across all sectors of the economy. She presented a gradual plan to her members for returning to work, but it includes many issues that have yet to be resolved. Suzanne Clark, thank you very much uh, for talking with us today. Tell us, I mean, as you think about all this, how big a challenge uh, is the country facing the private sector? I mean, it's not as simple as turning on a light switch, is it? No. No, no, it isn't. Thank you for having me today. Now, we sit in a unique vantage point because our members represent all sectors and all sizes and all geographies. And the idea of getting back to work and getting back to life is so important to them. So we know that there are experts, public officials, medical experts talking about when it's safe to get back to work, but we think that our job is to help business leaders begin to plan for how to get back to work. Your memo uh, that you sent out to your members, it starts out by saying that the return to work will be, quote, gradual, phased in, and will vary by several factors. Okay, this is what I was talking about in another video. I think people will be able to go back to work, but you're not going to go back to work the way you were before. So if you were used to working 40 hours a week, they might bring you back to work working 20 to 30 hours a week. And then your benefits might still be there, but there might be an increase in benefits. Um, I think that there's going to be a lot of factors. Let's see what she says about it. What are the factors? Well, I think you hit on them a lot tonight on the on the show, which are that different geographies have been hit in different ways. Different sectors will find it easier to ramp up than others. And it ranges from everything we've talked about, from testing and tracing to the availability of equipment, such as masks and thermometers and training on that equipment, all the way through childcare and transit. Uh, this is, you know, this unprecedented crisis in this country, and there's no playbook to take off the shelf and just execute. So it's why it's so important that we plan now so that when it's time to go back to work, people are really ready. We want to help both government leaders and business leaders anticipate what new restrictions, what new equipment, what new risks are out there so that they can really be ready. You, know, you can't underestimate what a job means to a family or to a community. And once we return to health, we need to be ready to return to work. And the other issue is that, as we all know, daycare is very expensive. And I'm going to tell you why I actually want to work part-time because my one son, my baby boy, daycare there was $185 a week. And I had applied for a program called Purchase of Care. But Purchase of Care became Purchase of Care Plus. And the state was only paying like $80 a week. And I was still required to pay $100 a week. Now, I had three kids. So you just imagine if you're paying $100 a week for three kids, that's $300. You're better off working part-time and taking care of your kids yourself. You tell me what you think about that. I want to know what you think and how you think people are going to be able to go back to work. And what is your plans when it's time for you to return back to work? Like, comment below.